Like it or not, video game collecting is big business. Just like comic books, coins, and other collectible items, rare video games in peak condition have been selling for higher and higher prices. Unfortunately, this trend has been growing in the field of computer game collecting as well. For at least two decades, computer game collecting was a much smaller field, with most items struggling to break the $300 mark. But recently, we've seen prices as high as $5,000 or more. It wasn't so long ago that rare Ultimas fetched $800, but if you want one now, you may have to cough up 10 times that amount. How do vintage computer games fetch that kind of money? Collecting is generally economics 101, supply and demand. If the supply is low and the demand is high, the price goes up. In vintage computer game collecting, items in good cosmetic condition are in short supply. And the best condition, with the shortest supply, is an unopened game, still sealed in its factory original shrink wrap. Sealed games have the best appearance, the least amount of shelfware, and are guaranteed to be complete with no missing items. When you see top dollar paid for a desirable vintage computer game, it's for a factory sealed item. But wait a minute, how do you know the shrink wrap on your expensive software collectible is authentic? Anyone can purchase new shrink film and reseal an open computer game. And when this much money is involved, there are always bad actors running scams. I've seen people new to the hobby pay way too much because they couldn't recognize when something has been resealed. So that's what this video is all about. The history and properties of original vintage computer game shrink wrap so you can avoid getting scammed. I have a lot to say about this topic and a lot of examples to show you. Here's what I'll be covering. First, I'll define the scope of what I'm talking about so you can decide if this video is worth your time. Next, I'll offer a brief overview of how big box games were typically sealed. I'll explain a process for evaluating your items, then list the most common characteristics of both factory original wrap as well as the different characteristics of non-original wrap. We'll put this information to use with a couple of examples, and then finish up with the most common questions I get about this subject. There's a lot to cover here, so if you're only interested in a specific topic, you can use the chapter markers in the video's description to skip around. Now, before we begin, your first question is probably, who is this guy and why should I listen to him about computer game shrink wrap? Well, I could mention that I've been collecting for over three decades and have over a thousand items in my own collection. I could also mention that I founded a computer game collecting group in the late 1990s and worked with other collectors to author a grading scale specifically for software collectibles. But the real reason you should take me seriously is because I worked at two retail software stores, Babbage's and Egghead Software, from the late 1980s to the early 1990s. Not only have I handled tens of thousands of retail software items from multiple publishers and distributors, but I've also personally re-wrapped nearly a thousand computer games when customer returns needed to be put back on the shelf. That experience alone gave me the knowledge I'm sharing today. This video covers the properties of retail big box computer games created from roughly 1980 to 2004. Additionally, all the information presented in this video is from a North American perspective. Package releases manufactured in other countries have sometimes deviated from these guidelines. While most of the examples provided in this video are for PCs and compatibles, the information in this video applies equally to all big box computer game platforms, such as Amiga, Atari, Apple, Commodore, etc. This video is not a complete history of big box retail packaging itself. For an excellent overview of that, I highly recommend checking out LGR's video on big box gaming history, which I'll link in this video's description. I will not be covering counterfeit items, such as box reproductions or forgeries. I will also not cover how to spot excess inventory publishing, such as slash re-releases. Those are separate topics that deserve their own videos. Finally, and I hate to do this, but I have to. A short disclaimer. I am not a packaging industry expert, and this video is not professional financial advice. I make no warranty on the accuracy or fitness of the information in this video. If you use or misuse the information in this video and lose money or reputation, I cannot be held at fault. Your collection is your responsibility. To better recognize the characteristics of original computer game shrink wrap, it helps to understand the most common sealing process. 
Big box games were typically assembled on a factory line, then placed inside two layers of shrink film material. Once placed inside the film, a heated sealing element, usually a hot thin wire, was brought down on the film about an inch away from the edges of the product. This melted the film, cutting it away from the product and producing a seal, effectively encasing the product in a sealed bag of loose shrink film. The product was then sent into a shrink tunnel, which is an oven that circulates heated air at high speed evenly across the entire product. This caused the film to shrink, producing the final result. There were two common ways computer games were sealed inside shrink film. The first used centerfold film, which created two layers by folding a large sheet of film over itself. This eliminated the need to seal the edge where the fold was, which saved time and reduced waste. Because of this, big box games sealed with this method only have three seams on their outer edges. The other method used single-wound shrink film, where a single sheet was guided by machinery into a sleeve of film that the product was inserted into. This produced only two seams, as well as an area of overlapping material, which I'll expand on later. Another important detail is that the sealing process was sometimes airtight, so to prevent creating a big shrink wrap bubble, small holes were sometimes punched into the shrink film as it was being fed into the line. This allowed the air to escape when the film contracted in the shrink tunnel. I've just described the most common sealing processes, but there were others that were less commonly used, like overwrap. Overwrapping differs from shrink film in that the overwrap is wrapped around the product, then the flaps of the plastic are tucked and sealed by machinery. These methods were much less common for computer software, but it's important to know about them because they can help you identify if your sealed item is original. For example, if you know that one publisher always used overwrap, or that some games were packaged differently based on what country the manufacturer was in, you can learn to spot fakes when you see one of their items sealed differently than they were historically. There is no single reference that illustrates every type used for every game, so ask a group of collectors for help if you have doubts. There were two basic formulations of shrink film used to seal big box games, polyolefin and polyvinyl chloride. Polyolefin, or POF, was the most common material used. It had a higher gloss and clarity than other films. It also remained more pliable both before and after heat was applied, making it more appealing to adapt to factory lines. There was less residue on sealing wires when using POF, and it also resisted tearing better. Polyvinyl chloride, or PVC, was much less commonly used. It required less heat to shrink than POF, making it appealing for smaller applications. PVC was not pliable, which made it feel stiff and brittle after shrinking. However, that gave it better puncture resistance than POF. While it's impossible to know the exact distribution, most commercial big box PC games made in the 1980s through roughly the mid-1990s were sealed in POF. As previously stated, its properties made it more appealing and more appropriate for large factory lines than PVC. That's not to say PVC was never used. IBM plastic clamshells were sealed with PVC because they had hard plastic corners and needed the puncture resistance. But other than special applications, PVC was much less common. So if you have no historical information about your item, it's generally safe to assume most were sealed using POF. However, because PVC required less heat to shrink, it was the only film used by retail stores to reseal customer returns. A small hardware setup and handheld heat gun were all that was necessary to perform in-store resealing using PVC. There were a myriad of publishers and manufacturers back when computer software was sold in boxes on retail shelves. As a result, there is no single universal test for determining if shrink wrap is factory original or not. Instead, several observations and tests, based on a variety of factors, are necessary to make an informed decision. This process is the same way antiques are appraised, where the condition of the item is measured against known technical and historical facts. There's a great video from the show Art Rageous that illustrates how art forgeries are detected using the same methodology, which I'll link in this video's description. Let's cover the most common characteristics and appearance of factory original shrink wrap. Keep in mind this assumes the most common shrink film for big box games, POF, was used. Even four decades later, POF is still somewhat pliable. This means it feels slightly flexible to the touch and can be manipulated somewhat, especially around corners that contain some wrinkles. 
seams, where the sealing wire melted the film together, can also be used to gauge authenticity. Games on a factory line were sealed with professional equipment that was usually well maintained. The result is a clean seam found on two or three edges of the product. Seams should not have globs of excess material and should be straight. While many factories produced three seams around the edges of a box, only two seams present is a special indicator that it was almost certainly produced at a factory. Two seams indicate that the shrink film was formed into a sleeve around the product rather than a large sheet folded in half. This was then heat sealed between each product in the sleeve, producing only two seams on opposite sides. Another common characteristic of items with only two seams is that the excess overlapping material is still visible, fused into a strip. Because the excess material strip was visible, the box was oriented such that the strip was created on the back of the box, facing away from the customer when the product was displayed at retail. Corners should be uniform in appearance and completely reduced in size with little or no excess material. Shrink tunnels were specialized industry ovens that maintained even heat and airflow across the product. The result is even shrinkage across the entire surface of the film without any loose material or excessive wrinkles. Quarter-inch holes were sometimes punched into the film shortly before the product was inserted, sealed, and heated. This allowed air to escape during the process and resulted in one or more small holes in the shrink film. Because shrink tunnel heat and airflow was uniform, the resulting holes were also uniform, resembling perfect circles. Aside from the sealing process and the material used, you can also use known historical characteristics of items to determine if the shrink wrap is still original. This usually requires a deep familiarity with certain product lines. But if you have this knowledge, you can use it to your advantage. One strong example of this is the dark half, which has the image of bloody handprints silkscreened directly onto the shrink film before the product was inserted. If those handprints are missing on your sealed copy, it's not original wrap. Here are a few other examples. In the very early days of computer games, it was common for items to be displayed on peg hooks, which were rods used to display products hanging from a hole in the packaging. To facilitate this, some publishers would attach adhesive hang tabs to the outside of the box after it was shrink-wrapped. If you know you have one of these specific items shrink-wrapped and the hang tab is missing, that could be an indication to investigate further. Also in the early days, some publishers set up their factory lines to apply the platform sticker on the outside of the shrink-wrap rather than on the packaging itself. This may have been to save time or money when manufacturing games ported to multiple platforms. Unfortunately, this meant that the platform sticker was lost once the shrink wrap had been discarded. If you have one of these items shrink wrapped, but it has no platform sticker where it should, that's a cause for concern. If you have a sealed item that you're just not sure about and you have other collector friends willing to help out, you can weigh it. Then your collector friends who have known good examples of the exact same item can weigh theirs. If your item has the same weight as theirs, you may still not know if your wrap is original, but at least you'll know that your item is complete. If all else fails, you can examine the item's patina. I like to describe patina in this context as a layer of age on the product. This can be hard to visualize, and it varies wildly, but sometimes there are subtle markers that the wrap is probably original. For example, promotional stickers that were only relevant for a limited time. Some retail stickers are also good indicators. There could also be SKUs present or other stock or inventory stickers. Look for anything that matches the item's timeline. Now that you know what to look for in most original shrink wrap, let's look at some common indicators of non-original wrap, such as resealing with PVC film by a retail store or an individual. Many resealed vintage computer games have shrink film that feels stiff and brittle. Compared to most factory original wrap, it has little or no flexibility when moved around. It also usually produces a crinkly sound when manipulated. Rewrapped items usually had heat applied with a handheld heat gun, which shrunk film unevenly. Inconsistent shrinkage, such as wrinkles on one side but not another, is usually an indication of this. Seams made by the heated sealing wire can also illustrate signs of rewrapping. 
Not being careful when manually sealing can leave behind globs of shrink film material or sloppy seams. Thin wisps of material might also be present, which result when dirty sealing wires don't seal evenly. These wisps are called angel hair in the packaging industry. If too much heat was applied during sealing, the film can actually burn and become dark and discolored, resulting in seals that look burnt. Sometimes, the combination of thin sealing wires and thin shrink film will produce thin seams. These thin seams, coupled with the brittle nature of most PVC film used during rewrapping, frequently split open. Items sealed as part of a mass production line have either two or three seams. Any item with four seams is suspect and should be examined more closely. Uneven application of heat, such as from a handheld heat gun, can result in holes or tears in the shrink film. These holes are much larger than quarter-inch venting holes and are always irregularly shaped. Using too much shrink film to seal a product can result in corners of excess unshrunken material. These are called dog ears in the packaging industry. Factory lines were adjusted to waste as little material as possible, so if these are present, look for other signs that the wrap may not be factory original. Sometimes you get lucky and can spot foreign items underneath the wrap that absolutely shouldn't be there. Markings like noticeable shelf wear, magic marker, and retail price stickers are all things that could only have been applied to unwrapped boxes. Also, look for signs that the box was never originally shrink-wrapped. Many later big box games use circular or rectangular adhesive seals on the box flaps instead of shrink-wrapping them. So if you find those under shrink-wrap, that wrap is automatically not factory original. Boxes with opening front flaps were also never sold shrink-wrapped, as that would have stopped potential customers from opening the flap while browsing products on the shelf. If detailed history of the item is known, you can compare your suspect box to known verified historical samples. As mentioned earlier, any sealed box that does not weigh the same as other known good sealed boxes means that something is likely missing, suggesting the item has been resealed. If the item originally had very distinct sealed qualities, such as only two seams, but your item doesn't match those characteristics, that may also be cause for concern. Consulting with other collectors can give you the knowledge to judge this. Before we leave this section of the video, I want to reiterate that everything we just covered are general guidelines, not hard and fast rules. There were always some exceptions, and knowing your history can make you aware of them. One exception to the above guidelines were non-rectangular or otherwise atypical packaging. These were sold shrink-wrapped, but were usually sealed with a much lower gauge or higher thickness of PVC film. This provided better protection and lasted longer with boxes that had sharp angles and corners. Oof, that's a lot of information. Are you ready to put that knowledge to work? Let's pull some questionable items from my personal collection and examine them. Then I'll give you my verdict on whether the item is still factory sealed. Remember, there is no single universal test for evaluating this. You have to make an informed decision based on multiple observations. This has many hallmarks of original wrap, including clean seams, no excess material, and flexible wrap. But what's more telling is that it still has one of its stock stickers attached. And if you look very closely, 
you can see that there was a large rectangular sticker from the publisher that was affixed to the film at one point, but has since fallen off. My verdict? Original. At first, the stiff, crinkly PVC wrap with excess material would make you think this has been rewrapped. The retail stickers also support that. However, atypical packaging was regularly sealed in stronger PVC film to protect the sharp angles, and the wrap also still has the publisher's Dawson Windows sticker on it. My verdict? Original. The wrap is hard, crinkly PVC. There are a few burnt seams and some irregular holes where the seams are splitting apart. But probably the most telling artifact is the retail sticker showing it came from a software resale shop. My verdict? <laughs> Obviously resealed. At first, the $1.99 budget sticker and second UPC sticker might suggest some sort of resale shop. However, the second UPC sticker was common for budget re-releases sold under a different SKU. The most telling fact is that the box is sealed on only two edges with an even strip of overlapping material on the back. My verdict? A budget re-release that is still originally sealed. There are crinkly dog ears of excess material and several retail stickers. Hilariously, the box's original circular end flap stickers indicate it was never wrapped in the first place, and one of them has been cut open. My verdict? Obviously resealed. This final example is a challenge. It has age-appropriate patina in the form of promotional stickers. There are tiny regular holes punched into the wrap, and the film itself is flexible POF. However, look inside and you'll see that the circular box flap stickers appear pried away from the flap openings, and there's damage to the box that looks like someone has already ripped it open. My verdict? I don't know. Wait, what? You heard me correctly. I can't tell. While I lean towards factory original wrap, there's enough evidence to support both conclusions. And that's okay. This is an inexact science due to lack of coordinated historical info. If this particular item really mattered that much to me, I would probably seek out someone else with an identical sealed copy so that we could compare notes. For many years, I've been asked a lot of questions about this aspect of collecting computer games. Let's answer them. Aren't you worried that you are teaching scammers how to fake factory original shrink wrap? This was the biggest concern from the collecting community when I announced I was making this video. My response? Scammers will always exist whether I share this information or not. The best defense against scammers is an educated consumer. Now, having said that, I did intentionally withhold some details that determined scammers could use to produce better fakes. 
For example, my research uncovered popular formulations of shrink film used for computer game boxes in the 80s and 90s, as well as their current brand names, gauges, and where to find a supply. While that level of historical research is fascinating to me personally, I recognize it could complicate our hobby, so none of that specific information is in this video. I'm thinking of buying sealed items for my collection. What can I do to protect myself from fraud? Common sense is your best friend here. Ask the seller for more pictures of the item from several angles so that you can get a better look at the item. This applies to all items, by the way, not just ones that are sealed. If the seller won't provide them or the pictures are blurry or poorly lit, you may want to look elsewhere. You can also ask computer game collecting communities for assistance, such as providing photos of the item you want to purchase and asking for opinions on whether you should proceed with the sale. Are there any situations where original shrink wrap should be removed from a collectible item? Some formulations of shrink film can continue to shrink over many years, especially if stored in warmer conditions. This leads to something computer game collectors call implosion, where the shrink film has contracted so much that it has compressed the box inwards. This is difficult to visualize on video, but by using a polarizer and a small object that casts a shadow onto the box, you can see that the box inside the shrink wrap is no longer flat. Removing shrink wrap from especially flimsy or hollow boxes can help prevent this. Also, if you strongly suspect your item has been rewrapped, you should probably remove the wrap. Rewrapped items are seen as misleading in the computer game collecting community, as they can lead to accusations of misrepresenting the condition of an item. And of course, there's the simplest answer of all. You want to play the game using the materials it originally came with. If you care more about its nostalgic or entertainment value than its monetary value, there's nothing wrong with that. Are there any situations that justify resealing a collectible item? As I just mentioned, most collectors discourage rewrapping items. Even if rewrapping is done in good faith as a protection measure, the knowledge of what kind of shrink wrap it is could get forgotten as an item changes hands. This can lead to accusations of fraud if someone sells a rewrapped item advertised as factory sealed. And again, there's that threat of box implosion. Most collectors who want to preserve their items for long-term storage should use a different solution, such as using acid-free bags, similar to how comic books are preserved. The bags will offer protection without imploding the boxes or being confused for original shrink wrap. Another option is acrylic boxes, which can be made to the exact dimensions of your item and offer protection against crushing. If you don't feel like making your own, one vendor of custom boxes is retroboxed, I'll link to their website in this video's description. I had my item graded and slabbed by a grading company. Doesn't that mean its shrink wrap is authentic? Well, that depends on how much you trust the grading company and how qualified you think they are to evaluate and grade software collectibles. So immediately, your next question is probably, do I personally trust video game companies to grade software collectibles accurately? As of the making of this video, Absolutely not. I've personally examined slabbed items that not only had obvious signs of rewrapping, but also one that was a counterfeit reproduction. Do I see this situation improving? While the number of units sold was way lower than the console game market, the computer game market was much more diverse. There were nearly a hundred different publishers and distributors. Some were small shops that did their own stuffing and sealing by hand, while others were large publishers that manufactured everything on a large factory line. Some distributors used different packaging methods depending on the country the item would be sold in or what supplies were available in that country. There were so many moving parts that I'm not surprised grading companies sometimes get this wrong. It seems impractical to employ enough experts to cover that wide a spectrum. Will they someday? I don't know, but Currently, in 2021, I don't trust video game grading companies to grade computer game collectibles. I just received an item from a seller that has obviously been rewrapped. Are they trying to scam me? What should I do? I try to give sellers the benefit of the doubt. If they're casual collectors or new to the hobby, they may have received the item in that condition and simply didn't know any better. Until the Michelangelo virus scare in 1991, it was standard practice for retail stores to reseal customer returns and put them back on the shelves. In the resale market, software resale shops continued that practice into the early 2000s. 
So it might not be a shady seller, but merely an uninformed one. If you have received a clearly resealed item, my advice is to act in good faith and contact the seller with your concerns and politely ask for a return. If they have trouble understanding your points, send them a link to this video as illustration. Are collectors really paying these insane high prices, or is something else going on? There is strong suspicion amongst collectors that many of these expensive transactions are by speculators, not collectors. Grading companies such as Wata and auction houses such as Heritage have been trying to establish computer game collecting as a high-priced collectible market for several years now and have been accused of manipulating the market. That is a topic large enough that it deserves its own video, and thankfully, Carl Yopst did just that. I'll link to his excellent video in the description, but for now, just assume that it is a mixture of collectors with deep pockets and investors making risky bets. And finally, why did they shrink wrap big box computer games anyway? It costs more money to shrink wrap a box than it would be to just use adhesive tape on the end flaps, as was common in the last years of big box computer game packaging, so you might be wondering why companies went through the trouble. The answer is that it was more preferred by retailers, who were the actual first-line customers of the product. Publishers marketed to retailers as well as the end user, so retailers' preferences were usually honored. So why did retailers prefer shrink wrapping? Shrink wrapping offered an extra level of protection during transport and handling, and the glossy nature of the film improved the product's appearance on the shelf. But most importantly, shrink film is tamper-evident packaging. The wrap condition itself was an indicator whether the customer had opened the product. Most computer software could be easily copied, so many software retailers in the early days had a policy of not accepting customer returns if the box had been opened. And that's all I have to say on this subject. As packed as this video was, please keep in mind that I am a generalist, not a deep historical expert on the packaging industry or individual software companies. There are people out there with deep knowledge of Sierra, LucasArts, Infocom, etc. So if you're trying to research a specific product, I suggest you seek out other collecting communities for exact answers. Otherwise, I hope this video helps you better manage and enjoy your collection. I'd like to thank the community over at the Big Box Personal Computer Game Collecting Group on Facebook, especially Stuart Feldhammer, Kevin Ng, Joel McCoy, Brenda Romero, Pascal, and Enrico Ricciardi for their input. Also, big thanks to my patrons over on Patreon for their support. And finally, huge thanks to Tom Carroll, a packaging expert at Industrial Packaging, for helping with my research. Links to all of these fine folks, as well as other details mentioned in this video, are in the video's description if you'd like to know more.